This is Ed L. 6A, headquarters station of the New Zealand Association of Radio Transmitters, with the official broadcast for May 2014. Tonight, presidential comment, headquarters news, and on the international scene, Dayton 2014, now history, but everyone is talking positive about this year's event. That and more, on tonight's NZART official broadcast. Good evening everyone, presenting the official broadcast, I'm Jim Meachin, Sidel 2BHF in Nelson. First up tonight is presidential comment. Here's our NZART president, Vaughan Henderson, Sidel 1VH. Vaughan? Thanks Jim and good evening everyone. As you listen to this, there's only one week to go to our annual general meeting and conference in Blenheim. As you will hear later in this broadcast, Marlborough Branch 22 members have been working hard to make our Queen's Birthday Gathering a success. I'm looking forward to meeting as many of you as possible over the weekend, and I'm sure we're going to have a great time. Council will be meeting in person on Friday the 30th of May as part of our conference weekend, and for most of your council this will be the first time in 12 months that we've met in person. We have a full agenda for this meeting, and I'll be reporting back to you on the outcomes in a future broadcast. While on the subject of conference, we still don't have a venue for our conference next year. We depend very much on branches around the country hosting the annual conference and of course finding the small team of volunteers to run it. I hope when the call goes out at the AGM next Saturday that we will have an offer to host next year's AGM and conference. Headquarters info line number 296, which went out on the 16th of May, contained information on our public liability insurance and what it covered. This has generated some interest and I will be following up on the request received. We're looking at the possibility of extending the public liability cover to include branches who don't currently have any cover for this and also checking on some details of the cover for members working at repeater sites. I'll let you know the outcome of this in a future info line bulletin. If you're interested in what's happening nationally and around the country with civil defence, have a look at the Ministry for Civil Defence and Emergency Management website. It can be found at www.civildefence.govt.nz. Follow the link to their e-bulletin. The May edition of their e-bulletin has just been released and contains a wealth of information on what's happening both nationally and regionally with civil defence. We're still looking for volunteers to fill two important vacancies. The first of these is the editor of Break-In. Although we have Stephen Heyman, ZR1TPH, as interim editor, we're very keen to find someone who can take on this job and ensure that our magazine continues. Do you think you might like to take this on? Please let me or Debbie know at headquarters as soon as possible. The other vacancy we'd like to find a volunteer for is the position of Break-In Advertising Manager. Lawn ZL2HB has stood down from this position as he's planning overseas travel and we'd like to find a volunteer to replace him. Again, if you're interested, please let Debbie know at headquarters. Thanks for listening and back to you, Jim. Thank you, Vaughan, the president of NZART, Vaughan Henderson, ZL1VH. The Whangarei Amateur Radio Club Branch 28 gives notice of the used equipment sale and branch dinner to be held on Saturday the 19th of July with the doors opening for buyers at 10.30am. Sellers can purchase table space at the usual $10 for 900mm. Table space can be purchased on the day if not sold out beforehand. Now the club dinner followed by the usual quiz will be held that evening starting with a meet and chat at 6pm with dinner following at 6.30pm. Soups, roasts and dessert for just $15 a person. Bookings for the dinner are required by Thursday 17th of July. Contact the club president Brian Wingers at L1BSW on 027 491 3888 that's 027 491 3888 or email bwinger at extra.co.nz. That's for sale table and meal bookings and all inquiries. That's the Wangare Amateur Radio Club Branch 28 used equipment sale and branch dinner to be held on Saturday the 19th of July. 
to news from NZRT headquarters and it's to Upper Hutt we go and say a very good evening to NZRT business manager Debbie Morgan, ZL2DL. Thanks Jim and good evening everyone. Only one week until conference so things have been rather busy here. Please advise me by Wednesday next week if you wish to place your apologies at the AGM as I will be leaving Thursday to travel to Blenheim. Last weekend I was asked by Council to represent NZART at the WIA AGM in Maroochydore, Brisbane, Australia. The weather was a balmy but slightly wet 27 degrees, which was a nice reprieve from the sudden drop in temperatures here in ZL. While there are a few similarities between the two organisations, there are a considerable number of differences. Structurally, WIA have nine directors, a treasurer and a secretary all voluntary positions. These are not regional based, unlike NZART councillors. Another significant difference was the format of their AGM. Quite simple but effective. Registrations commence on Friday with the AGM and all forums on Saturday, completed by an evening dinner. Timing is not constrained to a long weekend, therefore the conference can be held over a weekend in warmer climates. Not as formal as NZART, and cost-wise, more affordable for attendees, perhaps something we could consider in the future. WIA have introduced an online membership system. While initially it was expensive to implement, seems to be proving very successful and user-friendly, ensuring addresses are kept up to date and the facility to pay membership fees online on the anniversary of joining a big plus for members. Membership of the WIA is around 32% of total licensed amateurs, much like New Zealand. They too are facing declining numbers, therefore are constantly seeking ways to encourage amateurs to join. The Foundation licence continues to reap around 400 new amateurs to the hobby annually, with a focus on improving licence conditions by lobbying the ACMA, their administration, for the class of licence to include digital modes, similar to the UK. The Amateur Radio magazine is now available in digital PDF format to members. This appears to be very popular. The total file download is only around 7 to 8 megabytes, quite reasonable given internet speeds these days. Considerable focus is being placed on the ANZAC commemorative year in 2015, with a special event called VK100 ANZAC being operational from April to December next year. NZART will also have ZL100 ANZAC for the same period. The WIA are preparing a special award. The criteria for this will be advised in due course. I will be preparing a full report to Council on other matters discussed. Therefore, best not to give too much away at this time. Suffice to say, it was an enjoyable, but more importantly, educational trip for me in understanding how other organisations work. That's all from me, Jim. Hope to see many of you at conference. Thank you, Debbie. Debbie Morgan, ZL2DL, our NZART Business Manager. For a look now at international amateur radio news, we're off to Ohio to join Newsline's Hal Rogers, K8CMD. The 2014 Dayton Hamvention is now history, but there's a lot to talk about. Amateur Radio Newsline's Don Wilbanks, AE5DW, and Stephen Kinford. NAWB were there with their recorders to capture some of the highlights of this year's event. Here's AE5DW. Hamvention for some is all about the toys. For others, it's the forums. Perhaps it's the new gear announcements. Many go only for the flea market. The thing is, there's something for everyone at the world's largest ham fest. So how does this year stack up to last? We ask some of the Big guns. Here's CQ Magazine's Rich Moses on W2VU. Uh, it's a great show as always, and uh, as a lot of people know, we've been having our issues lately with getting our print issues out, and uh, we are uh, turned the corner on that, and we're getting back uh, on track. And the support and encouragement that we've been getting from people here has been absolutely incredible. Um, it, cements my long-held belief that hams are the best people in the world. Dennis Machenbacher, K7BV from Yezu. We think the show seem, uh, seems healthy. Our booth uh, traffic has been 
healthy. I don't know what the actual numbers are, but it seems like they're up a little bit. Of course, you can never tell with the weather, of course, whether it drives the people in or not. Let's check out on ICOM and Ray Novak, N9JA. Things have been going by so fast, it, it's unbelievable. It's been a great show. We've been seeing a lot of people come through. Um, I joke around that P.T. Barnum was a smart man because he only had three rings to his circus. I think we're doing 12 different things here with the different live streams that we're doing, as well as the support of the youth forum, and it, it's been nuts. I've spent more time running between the different events than being in my own booth. Compare this Dayton to past Dayton's. Bigger, smaller, about the same? Uh, your perspective on that? It's, it's tough to judge because the weather has been a little bit difficult this year. Uh, between the rain, the cold air, I thought we were going to have snow flurries this morning with the way it felt, but for me, being from the Pacific Northwest, it feels good and the rain's normal, but it comes and goes. I really can't judge till tomorrow when we see the people in the stands for the prize drawings. But I think we've got a great crowd here anyway with all the weather. Ham Nation has a huge presence at Dayton. Here's Bob Heil, K9EID, and Gordon West, WB6NOA. Dayton's been huge for us this year. Of course, we've got a bunch of new products. And uh, with, uh, with all that's happened with Ham Nation, I I'm overwhelmed. They're lined up 10 and 12 deep to get in here to see yourself and, and Gordon and, and Valerie. It's really amazing as what Ham Nation's done for amateur radio. We've had several dozen come in just today alone that got their license because of Ham Nation and, and what they've learned from that show. So we're excited about that. Uh, from a Ohio Sound standpoint, we our sales are way over last year again. But we're blessed because we keep new products that work well and they don't cost a lot of money and everybody's happy. And that's, that's the main thing for me is to keep... Keep coming out with good products that we need, and that's that's what we're answering here. So, it's been a great 2014. I'm not going to talk about the weather, Don. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it, it's been a little cold, but uh, inside it's been very busy. This hall's really been full, and I look and see again. There's there's 10 or 12 people lined up again for the Ham Nation for us to. They want a, a postcard and signatures from yourself and George and. All of us is here. What, what a great thing. And, of course, Newsline's such a big part of that, and we appreciate all that, that, that Bill and you do to keep that going. Hi there. Gordon West, WB6NOA at Hamvention 14. Wow. Uh, Stephen and I have looked it over. It's the biggest I've seen in many, many years. It is wall-to-wall, -wall, great hams all saying hi. And we hope if you're not uh, here that you'll come and see Hamvention next year. 2015. Well, as you can see, people come from all over the world to the largest amateur radio gathering on the planet. And all 20 or 30,000 of those have different reasons for being here. But the one thing that ties us all together is our love for this great hobby and service, and that is amateur radio. Whether you work satellites or moon bounce or you just rag chew or just uh, make contacts on the repeater, if you're an IRLP person, or an Echolink person, you're really into D-Star, you're into rolling your own stuff, you're into kit building, it doesn't matter. There's something for you at Hamvention. We'll see you at Hamvention 2015. The planning starts now. For now, with Bill Pasternak, WA6ITF at the editor's desk, I'm Hal Rogers, K8CMD, saying 73, and we thank you for listening. Amateur Radio Newsline is copyright 2014, all rights reserved. Thanks, Hal. And as always, we say thank you to Newsline for the use of their copyright material. NZART, AGM and National Conference, is being held next weekend in Blenheim, hosted by the Marlborough Amateur Radio Club Branch 22. The team, they're ready to go. With this final update, here's John Neal, ZL3LI. Thank you, Jim, and good evening, everybody. Only a week to conference now, and this is simply to say everything is ready. We've even asked for a good fine weekend, and we look forward to welcoming you to Blenheim for the NZART conference. If you haven't registered and are still thinking you might like to come, it's not too late, but you will, I'm afraid, be up for the financial penalty. But all the details are in break-in, and you are welcome to avail yourself of the opportunity. So, just to repeat, everything's ready. Branch 22 looks forward to welcoming you. 
John Neills at L3 LA reporting for the Marlborough Conference Committee. Now it's to Waro News, here's Rosemary ZL1 RO. Thanks Jim and hello everyone. It's almost NZART conference time again and of course that means it's also time for the Waro AGM which takes place during the NZART conference weekend in Blenheim. The Waro AGM will be held at the Marlborough Convention Centre Blenheim on Sunday the 1st of June starting at 8.15am sharp. Please note the start time of 8.15am. The early start will allow attendees to go to the alternative program or to another AGM later in the morning. Waro President Cathy ZL2 ADK is hoping for a good attendance of members at the AGM this year. If you're unable to attend, apologies can be emailed to any Waro executive member or to myself. I'm unable to be at conference this year, but I'm sure that those of you who are attending will have a great time. The Thelma Super Contest results will be announced at the Waro AGM and again on the official broadcast from conference. We hope to announce after the AGM that an editor has been found for the Waro Bulletin and to resume publication of the magazine. In the meantime, we'll maintain contacts with members by email and where necessary by snail mail. Here's a date to circle on your calendar. Saturday, August the 9th is when the Hamilton Market Day is being held and it's a great opportunity for YLs to get together for morning tea and friendship. I will remind you again next month. YLs do not have to be Waro members to come to these gatherings. That's all for me from Waro Jim. Good night, everyone. Thank you, Rosemary. Reporting for Waro, Rosemary Bosher, ZL1RO. Finally, in tonight's official broadcast lineup, it's Branch News. Here's Stephen McNeil, ZL4HG. Thanks, Jim, and good evening, everyone. And we start tonight with North Shore Branch 29 in ZART, which has its next meeting on Monday, June the 9th, at 400 East Coast Road in Sunnynook on the North Shore. Dennis, ZL1TAY, will be giving a talk. The Franklin Amateur Radio Club, Branch 10, has its next meeting on Tuesday, the 17th of June. The topic will be a discussion concerning antennas for the clubhouse. And that meeting will be held in the club rooms on Stadium Drive in Pukekohe, starting from 7.30pm. Upper Heart Branch 63 has a midwinter Christmas dinner on a Friday night at the end of June at the Gray's Restaurant in Trentham. The exact date was not known, but it will be either Friday the 20th or 27th of June. Look at your newsletter for details and make sure you let the club know by the 31st of May if you're coming along. Wellington Branch 50 now meets on Wednesday the 18th of June at the Lutheran Church Hall which is in King Street in Newtown starting at 7.30pm. James ZL2ET will give a talk on basic radio astronomy. And the evening is also likely to cover discussions concerning a shared site for the Quartz Hill user group. Hutt Valley Branch 18 ends at ART has its next meeting on Monday, June the 9th at the club rooms in the Philip Evans Reserve, which is in the service lane off Birch Street in Waterloo. This will be the club's annual general meeting. And finally to Nelson Branch 26 NZART, which has its next meeting on Wednesday the 18th of June, starting 7.30pm. The meeting is held in the National Party Electorate Office meeting rooms on the corner of Waimea and Quarantine Roads. Now on the evening there will be a report on the Marlborough NZART conference and Pete ZL2FSK will talk about all the cool stuff you can do with a Raspberry Pi, a credit card size computer that can plug into your TV and keyboard. Well that's all from me, back to you Jim. Thank you Stephen, Stephen McNeil ZL4HG reporting from Christchurch. The next issue of NZART headquarters info line will be emailed on Friday the 6th of June. Remember, you can subscribe for your copy of this bulletin of news from NZRT headquarters on the NZRT webpage at www.nzart.org.nz. The next official broadcast of NZART will be the special conference broadcast made by Marlborough Branch Station ZL2KS at 8pm only next Sunday night, the 1st of June. The conference broadcast will be available for replay as an MP3 file on the NZART website on Tuesday the 3rd of June. 
This is ZL 6A, headquarters station of the New Zealand Association of Radio Transmitters, concluding the official broadcast for May 2014. Good night, everyone. Good night now.